What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for tuning in. This week, I have the 2018 BMW i3 S. Big thank you to BMW USA for sending me this car. Now, the i3 S is the more beefier version of the i3. You can spot that by the wider fender flares on this model. You're also going to have a little accent at the bottom of the bumper, i3 S badge in the back, but the big news is in the battery. So now this makes 135 five kilowatts as opposed to 125 which is going to equate to 184 horsepower and about 200 pound feet of torque now that may not sound like a lot but this thing is brisk it will move guys so new for this year is this color it's called melbourne red this week has just been nothing but red cars so i've been comparing reds under the radar and this has to be probably one of my favorite ones it contrasts very nicely with the black accents on the BMW. Now the front of the car is a little bit different for the S version. You have fully blacked out uh, bottom part of the bumper. You're also going to have, of course, the little accents that I mentioned earlier, and that's pretty much it. And you can really see those wider fender flares, but you do have full LEDs on this model. So the daytime running lights, low beams, high beams, turn signals, all LEDs, and you can see very well at night, especially in Fort Worth, Texas, which is where I live. Now the kidney grill on here is completely blanked out. There's obviously no use for it, so they just redesigned it for aerodynamic purposes. And the windshield on here is actually very, very large, like larger than I thought. And I'll give you guys an inside look, but this is how big that windshield is. I was actually super surprised and the visibility is fantastic. You also have a carbon fiber roof, which I did not notice until like my third or fourth day with the car. The black wheels on here are 20 inch black painted gloss wheels. They look really, really good. Of course, it keeps that whole red and black theme going on and it gives this car a really good profile look. The car is also lowered a little bit. So you do have that sportier look on here. You also have these goofy character lines on this car. It's a very strange looking vehicle, but I kind of like it in a quirky little way. Great visibility because of all the glass and the rear tail lamps are pretty unique themselves. They have these two light strips that come up and they form the look of the LED and you have your BMW symbol in the middle, i3s over off to the right side. You have a little chrome strip underneath there and then of course the red bumper underneath. Now the charging port for this is located of course in the back. You have a regular charging port and then an area underneath to put in the DC fast charger which is very easy to use, it lights up accordingly. And in the front, you're going to have the gas tank for your range extender, which is a little three cylinder. Now, the key for this is very, very simple. It has your lock, your unlock, all of your standard features, and it's wrapped in this kind of square shaped design with your chrome accents. And to get into the car, you can of course lock and unlock it. When you unlock it at night, you have this blue ambient lighting that comes up and it looks really cool but unfortunately you have to stick with the blue you can't change the color as far as the advanced keyless access system it's pretty much standard like any other bmw you put your thumb on the rib pattern that will lock the car and there's a touch sensor right behind you put your hand there that will unlock the car so as for the interior now before you make these crazy assumptions it is very interesting first of all now let me explain what bmw is going for here so all the materials in here are basically biodegradable materials so you can kind of break these materials down after the lifespan of this car is complete and reuse them in future BMW i models you also have a door in the back you pull that handle there and that will open the back door so the back passengers can get in it's super Honda element style but it gives it a little bit more quirkiness to an already quirky car but as far as materials you have this brown and orange material um, topped with this sort of brown leather. You also have white leather with white stitching that's going to run right where you rest your arm. It's really nice and soft. You have recycled carbon all along the outside of the door panel. Massive pocket space in the doors. Your speaker, your door handle, lock unlock, window controls, mirror controls. And then the actual handle where you grab and close the door is right up top. It's kind of a crazy place to put it. Um, the tub of this car is going to be recycled carbon as well so you can see that sort of quilted carbon look which looks really neat and then of course the back door is going to have the same materials and it's going to house the incredibly gorgeous looking blue seat belts which i'm a sucker for colored seat belts and blue is my favorite color so 
I'm just super glad that they have those. It made me really, really happy. Now, over off to the left, you have your gas tank release, your front trunk release, rear trunk release, accelerator pedal, brake pedal, your i3 Brandon mats, and a ton of room right there because, of course, you have no transmission tunnel. Now, as for the seats themselves, they're fully manual adjust, which makes no sense in a $58,000 vehicle. Now, the seats themselves are pretty interesting looking. They surprisingly hold you pretty well in place despite their very flat looking appearance. Okay, so shutting the door on the BMW i3, like I said, the grab handle is gonna be up here. So you grab that and the window is going to close. You guys can see that, you can probably hear it. But here's another look at the interior. Right, so starting the car is very simple. As long as you have the key in here, your start stop button's gonna be right there. And you're gonna push that while your foot's on the brake. And that's it, start it up. So, first thing you'll notice about the steering wheel um, is that it's got this just two spoke design. You don't see this a lot in cars, but you also do have this aluminum piece which is gonna run all along here. So if I get a little bit closer, you guys can see that aluminum strip running there. The leather itself is very nice, really supple. Over here, you're going to have all of your volume controls, your different modes as far as uh, radio and everything goes. You're also gonna have your voice commands, phone commands, of course your blue BMW symbol with the blue accent around it to indicate this is the I series. Um, of course your horn right there over here going to have all of your cruise control settings you do have adaptive cruise control in here so you can use that so coming behind here you are going to have of course your blinkers right there now you do have a button here and if you push that button it's actually going to control the screen at the top left so if you guys can see that you can toggle through your kilowatts miles per hour the degrees outside the time and you can also go to where it'll show you the combined range between the range extender and the battery. So you can do that, which is pretty nice. Over here to the right, that's going to be your shifter. So as you can see here, I'm in park. So you push that button to go into park. You're gonna click it a half step back for neutral, all the way back for reverse. As soon as you go into reverse, your backup camera comes up. Your mirrors are actually going to tilt down and you have one of the clearest backup cameras I've ever seen. It does have guidance lines so I can turn the steering wheel and they will turn with me, but just like seriously, look, I can even see the cloud detail in there. It's one of the best quality backup cameras I've ever seen. And of course, to go into drive, you're gonna push this all the way forward. Mirrors are going to tilt back up, if you guys caught that. Right below that, you're going to have your wipers, so you can turn those off. And of course, you have your rear wiper, which you can adjust like that, and then you do have um, automatic wipers on here as well. So coming over here to the left, like I pointed out earlier, you do have your gas tank, your trunk, and then your front trunk hood release over there. You are going to have your automated lights right over there, interior illumination. You've got a little bit of leather located right here with some stitching, everything like that. You've got some of that eucalyptic wood, which is a really nice grain. It's gonna run right here. And then right back here, it's sort of this like recycled carbon fiber. It's pretty strange looking. The only thing I don't like about this, I don't mind it that much because I have had this car for a week, I've kind of gotten used to it, but it reflects in the in the windshield a lot. So it kind of looks like the windshield's dirty because you see all the speckle in the windshield when you're driving. So that does kind of get frustrating, especially on a sunny day like today. Now behind there, you also have more leather. You've got more of that wood which kind of dips into here, which I have been able to use that as sort of like a storage space you can kind of throw a wallet or something right there and it'll stay it won't roll around um, over here you're going to have more of the wood more leather you're gonna push this to open that area now here's another funny part the owner's manual is so quirky itself it's kind of like this wool material with leather and the blue accents you know if you want to be different and you like things that are just crazy and out there this is definitely the car to get guys um, now coming to the center console you do have your screen located right up here sorry about the sunlight by the way but you've got a floating screen here and then you've got your main screen right over here so I'll get to all the specifics in these in just a second 
So coming right here, you do have all of your um, your presets, things like that. They are touch sensitive, so if I just slide my finger across there, it'll show that. Of course, your volume knob is gonna be right there. You do have heated seats, no cooled seats in this car. You do have one zone uh, temperature, so you don't have dual zone or anything like that. Of course, you have heated seat for the passenger as well, all of your max AC. You're gonna push that for all of your safety controls, so that's gonna pull up your pedestrian controls um, as far as autonomous braking and things like that. Now, coming down here, you don't have a lot. You basically just have a lot of empty space because you don't have a transmission tunnel, so nothing is going to be in the way right here. You kind of have just empty area, your i3 badge right there, and then you have a little area here which you can probably strap something in there and it kind of holds it tight right there not really sure what you can use that for but it is there you have one cup holder right down here you're going to have your iDrive system right here as well and then different for this specific car you have your sport button so normally you're going to have your comfort eco pro and eco pro plus i'll talk more about those in the driving portion of the video but you do have the addition of a sport button which is nice you've got your parking sensors right there uh, your familiar iDrive controls uh, it does have the touch sensitive pad on here so you can write on top of here as well coming down here you do have your parking brake electronic parking brake you do have storage space underneath here so if you guys can see that you've got a usb right there now you do have android auto or i'm sorry apple carplay no android auto but you do have apple carplay in here it is going to be wireless apple carplay which is a huge plus but the downside is you can't get android auto in this car just apple carplay you have an actual cigarette lighter right here which is normal in most cars but it's just funny that it actually has the cigarette on it you know out of all cars that i wouldn't expect to see an actual cigarette symbol in it, it's this car so that's pretty funny you do have a removable cup holder right there in the middle. And now this is going to be your armrest, so you can push this here and you can fold that down. It is nicely leather wrapped. Um, very, very soft as you guys can see there. Really nice contrast stitching. You lift up the middle part and you do have a little bit of storage area located right underneath there. Um, you don't have a moonroof or anything like that because you do have the carbon roof in this specific one. You have your interior illumination, SOS, things like that up here, up top going to have interior mirror with your interior illumination all right so getting into these screens so the first screen is going to be your basically your driver display so this is for the driver to see it's going to show you all of your basic information so right over here you're going to have your power so what that means as soon as you get on the throttle this will go up and then once you get right around to over here, that's gonna indicate that you're at basically max power. Now you do have regenerative braking, so as you brake, it'll go the opposite direction towards the charging state of the battery, which means it'll just put more charge continuously back into the battery as you let off the throttle, it has regenerative braking. And I'll show you guys how that works once I get to the driving portion of the video, but then once you brake, it'll go all the way over here to indicate that you're getting max charge put back into the battery. Of course, your miles per hour right here. You're going to have your trip monitor over here, what mode you're in. So if I toggle between the different modes, you guys can see that right there. And you do have different speed limits uh, in your Pro and Eco Pro Plus. So Pro, you're limited to 75 miles an hour, and Eco Pro Plus, you're limited to 56 miles an hour. So you do have that. Now over to the left, like I guys showed you earlier, you do have your little area which you can toggle through using the button on the left stock. And then below that, you're going to have the range on the gas part of the range extender. So, pretty simple. Coming to this screen, I really like the design here. I love that floating design. It looks really neat, especially at night. At night, everything kind of disappears, and it literally looks like the screen is just floating there. It's a pretty cool design trick, but this isn't going to be a touch screen or anything like that, so you can't use it as a touch screen. You do, of course, have Apple CarPlay on here no Android Auto or anything like that. You do have your navigation, so you can click that, go to your navigation, um, all of your weather, my vehicle. So if you go to my vehicle, you can do things like all of your settings as far as lighting, traction control, speed warnings, uh, interior, exterior lighting, all that kind of cool stuff. I drive settings, content. You can plan your charging around your routes. So you can choose what time slots you want to set your charging for different things like that, which is very, very helpful, especially if it's your first time having an electric vehicle. Your driver profiles, vehicle status, you can check things like your tire pressure monitor, different settings, 
driver information, owner's manual, which you do have different animations you can go to if you want to see a more uh, picture-oriented version of the manual instead of reading through a bunch of words. So you do have a lot, and the system is very easy to use. I love BMW's iDrive. It's one of the easiest systems there is to use, and the iDrive controller itself is very simplistic. You just circle it, bump it left, bump it right. You can push down to select menu, back, option, and then, of course, all the other buttons as well. So that's pretty much it for the front, guys. We'll go ahead and hop in the back seat and see how the room is. All right, so hopping into the back seat, I do have the front seat set to my driving position. I'm six feet tall, so sitting behind myself, I'm gonna go ahead and hop in. Now, getting into the back is a little bit of a squeeze. Once you're back here, you are pretty comfortable. Um, especially sitting behind myself, I still have about, you know, two to three inches of leg room back here. And then as far as feet room, you don't have a lot. Um, that's as far as I can put my feet in, if you guys can see that. So not a ton of room underneath there. So if you had a taller passenger, sitting behind them would definitely not be comfortable, especially if you're my height. Um, no vents back here, no map pockets behind either seat. Uh, you do still have your handle, same materials over here, same blue seat belts. You do have this little hump here, which you would think would be an armrest. There's no armrest right here. You can't even put a third person here because you do have your cup holders located right down here. Um, another thing that goes with the whole unconventional doing everything differently scheme of this car, you know, these headrests, if you push this button, you would think they would fold forward, but they fold backwards, so. There's that. But that's pretty much it for the back. Um, you know, I would say that you could put a third person here easily because you don't have a hump here. But like I said, you have your cup holders here, so that kind of eliminates that as an option. And if you want to get out, you do have a little um, tab right here. You pull that, you can push the seat forward. That way you can get out easier. And then to shut the door, once again, you have your handle here. So you're gonna pull that handle and then shut your door. But you can't get out unless the front passenger is ready to let you out so their door has to be open in order for you to get out so another tidbit for this car but that's pretty much it for the back seat we'll go ahead and check out the trunk you guys all right so coming to the trunk of the i3 you do have an okay amount of room uh, you do have two straps located over here and over here you can fold the seats down if you guys want to get a little bit of extra room but you don't have anything underneath so you do have your electric motor located there so unlike tesla uh, let's say the Model 3, you won't have storage space located underneath there. And you can also take off this cargo cover if you want more room for taller items. That's pretty much it for the trunk, guys. Let's go ahead and check out underneath the front trunk. All right, guys, I totally put this in last minute into the video, but I was able to fit this entertainment center in here, and I was so surprised that it fit back here. I've got the seats down. Um, I've got enough room. It's kind of wedged in there sideways. You guys can see that and i have plenty of room to shut this and yeah now coming underneath the front trunk uh you do have a tiny amount of space so nowhere near the space you would expect um, a lot of people do benchmark tesla so they think just because tesla's got the big trunk underneath the hood that you're going to have the same thing in every electric car definitely not the case with the i3s so you do have your charger located in here along with a few other gadgets but that's pretty much all you're gonna get right there guys and you have your windshield wiper fluid off to the left so that's pretty much all there is to see here we'll go ahead and take it out for a drive all right so before we jump into the actual driving part of the video I want to go over charging so sometimes when you go to a charging station they don't always work but I was able to get this one to work the charging process is pretty simple pretty self-explanatory and um, I think the charging only took probably about 45 minutes or so to get from 30% to about 98% charge. Then after that, we were pretty much good to go, get back on the road, and this thing would really take off. All right, so behind the wheel of the 2018 BMW i3s The biggest thing with electric cars is as soon as you drive off as you guys just heard There's no noise Now the only thing you hear is the tire hash of the tire meeting the road and That's it 
So this does have regenerative braking. So right now coming up to the stop sign, I can just let off the gas. It'll slow down, slow down. And then if you let it, I'm on a little bit of a descent right now, but if you let it, if you're on a flat surface, it'll come to a complete stop. So once you get used to it, you know, this is probably the, this is my fifth day with the car and I've gotten so used to the regenerative braking that I've gotten to a point to where I just use the regenerative braking. I just modulate the accelerator pedal and I use that to come to a complete stop. I almost barely use the, the brake itself. Now, the one thing I was concerned about with the regenerative braking is if the people behind you don't know that you're slowing down, but I was driving in at night and I realized that when you let off the accelerator and the regenerative braking starts to happen, the brake lights do come on. So if you're worried about that, that BMW's got you covered in that area. So I am glad that they thought of that because it was something I didn't think about, then I thought about it later. And like I said, glad they incorporated that. Another thing you notice is the instant torque. If I were to compare this to something that many of y'all have probably experienced before, it would either be a really, really fast go-kart, like a really fast go-kart. So if you've ever done indoor go-karts, you know that they're all electric. So this feels like that, but faster and it's bigger. Or if you've ever driven a golf cart, I mean, it's the same thing, they're all electric, but it's just, it's such a cool experience in its own way you know, I've gotten used to not hearing the motor sound for a few days, but the way this thing performs is incredible. So from a dead stop. And that is 60. So it's, it's pretty quick. Actually, it's very, very quick. Uh, so this is the S version. So it's got a little bit more power than the regular i3, of course. And you get a little bit of a sportier suspension. I like the way it's got a little bit wider fenders and everything like that. Just the look for me, I like it. I like how different it is. Some people think it's just butt ugly when that may be true, but coming around corners, handles really well. <laughs> really, really well. And it's rear wheel drive, so it'll just dig out of this corner. traction control on here is fantastic uh, you know I was reading something the other day where BMW was basically bragging on the traction control system in this car and how it's able to handle just that instantaneous torque especially with those skinny of wheels back there so the fact that it gets that power down with zero wheel slip is extremely extremely impressive now you can turn traction control off and then you can have a lot of fun so we're gonna do that. We're gonna go into the settings. You just go to vehicle settings, scroll right down there, the traction control. We're gonna click that, immediately turns off your traction control and we're going to throw it into sport mode. So we're gonna go right, right here. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. So sport mode is new on this model. So you don't have sport mode in any other model except for the i3S, which makes sense. So all the acceleration is so much more instantaneous. It's a, it's a pretty drastic change even from comfort to sport of how instantaneous the accelerator response is. So we're good. Yeah, it's got some good pickup. You guys can probably see me get pushed back. Now I will say the area or I guess the speed where it accelerates the hardest is probably from 30 to 50. So if I slow down to 30, let it slow down a bit. And that's 50. <laughs> it accelerates super hard right in those kind of cruising miles per hour. Another thing too is when you corner this thing, so like if I turn right right now and they give it a little bit of gas in the corner, it just, man, this thing books. I'm telling you guys, it is crazy. So into the corner. Kind of felt the back end step out a little bit. And that's already 60 miles an hour right there. It was 58 technically, but yeah, this this is very quick.
so fun. All right, so I'm going about 18 miles an hour right now. <laughs> now I'm not going 18 miles an hour. So here's the interesting part about this car. I have the window down so you guys can hear. So from the outside, it is pretty quiet, so. I could literally sneak up on someone right now and they would have zero clue. Now once you get this thing moving a little bit, once you accelerate mildly aggressive, you can hear the motor do its thing, the electric motor do its thing. Uh, but it's more of like a really loud spaceship whine. It's really hard to explain, but I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So if I give it some acceleration now, you just hear this weird like, it sounds like you're about to just time warp. It sounds like I'm driving the DeLorean from Back to the Future. It's just so crazy. It's definitely taking some getting used to, but man, I've, ugh, I've fallen in love with the instant nature of everything. And to put this into perspective, this has basically the same power as like a Subaru BRZ but yet this feels miles faster than a BRZ, miles faster. And not only because this has more torque than a BRZ, but because everything is right there all the time. So to put it in, into a better perspective for you guys, if you've never driven, driven an electric car. So with a gas motor, of course you rev it up. So let's say you make peak horsepower at about 6,000 RPM. Now your horsepower and your peak torque aren't always going to hit at the same time. You may get peak torque a little bit before you get your peak horsepower. But even so, if you're revving up, you're gonna be in the actual peak of your power for probably a second, maybe half a second. And then you're shifting into the next gear, it drops down again, and you just repeat that process. Now with this, imagine you're at peak horsepower and peak torque all the time. There's like all the time. It feels so much quicker than the numbers suggest. And it's all because it's just instant. It's definitely been an experience with this car. I personally, I want to say I would get one, but it's probably a honeymoon phase because this is my first electric car that I've driven. Really, really want to drive the Model 3 and a Tesla, any other electric cars out there to really gauge and get a feel for what the competition has to offer in terms of electric vehicles. But first impressions are very, very high. Definitely, it's something people have to give a chance to. You know, like I said, I had this car for, I'm having this car for seven days. This is my fifth day with the car. And it's really given me a chance to fully take it in, get used to it, and really appreciate this car for what it is. And trust me, this car has a lot to offer, especially considering you get that almost $7,000 uh, tax credit for buying a full electric car. It'll basically, you know, save you about $1,500 to $2,000 a year on fuel, no oil changes, all that cool stuff. So lots and lots of benefits to electric cars. And this specific one has an eight year, 100,000 mile battery pack warranty. So, I mean, BMW's pretty much got you covered on that. That pretty much ends this review, you guys. I really hope y'all enjoyed this review. It was a little bit different because this is my first electric car. I wanted to make sure I covered as much as I could. I'm still spotty on a few things, so please forgive me for that. But if you like this review, be sure to hit that like button. You guys can subscribe over to the left. Would love to have you guys check out my videos. I have new videos uploaded every single week, or you can check out my other videos on the right. But thank you guys for watching. Y'all take care. Bye.